what's happening crypto fam happy happy thursday good morning and welcome back to love for crypto i'm scott it's a pleasure to have you here and i appreciate you taking the time out to consume the content so thank you no videos the last couple of days i've been ill ill me not not been this i've not felt as bad as i felt in the last couple of days in years i actually can't remember the last time i was that ill flu hit me bad Getting over it now, though. So let's have a chat about XRP and the SEC. Um, according to a Fox News reporter, ripple the SEC major court decisions that may make the direction of lawsuit imminent. The end could be imminent, they're saying. I mean, I think pretty much every single person in crypto is just like, when the is this going to end? So, it ends when it ends. But I still get asked questions. People still speculate. So when I see a little something, something, I'm going to share it. So, Fox reporter Eleanor Tourette shares expectations regarding upcoming court decisions in the SEC case, according to Tourette. Um, two key decisions are presently being awaited. First, Judge Netburn's decision on whether the Hinman emails and docs fall under attorney-client privilege. Then second, Judge Torres's decision on the SEC's motion to seal its opposition to crypto law founder John Deaton's request to file an amicus brief on the agency's expert witness. So she tweeted, what are we waiting for in the SEC Gov versus Ripple lawsuit? Two things, the decision on whether the human emails and docs fall under attorney-client privilege and the decision on the SEC's motion to seal opposition. John Deaton tells her both decisions are imminent and could be made by the end of the week. So as previously reported, the SEC had made numerous efforts to conceal the emails that contained the draft of Hinman's speech. The agency is now attempting to persuade the judge that the documents requested by the defendants are covered by attorney-client privileges <laughs> after its argument on deliberate process privilege was rejected by the court. I mean, for starters, I think this attorney-client privilege is a load of fucking bullshit. Personally, I think it's a load of fucking bullshit. I don't give a shit what you tell your lawyer. It should all come out in court. I don't care what you think that you can just fucking hide. But no, no. Transparency. Yeah, that's what, that's what we want. We want fair systems of transparency and trust. We ain't getting that here. So, following the rejections, the SEC is being asked to provide 10 documents to assist the court in its decisions. Judge Sarah Netbert conducted a conference call earlier in the month to go through the document release. Fox correspondents Eleanor Tourette, 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 I don't fucking know, and Charles Gasparino indicated that Ripple lawsuit may ultimately be decided by the speech given by former Securities and Exchange Commission employee William Bill Hinman four years ago. In a critique of the controversial 2018 speech, Ripple General Counsel Stuart Alderotta claimed that the Ethereum speech, which is at the heart of the company's battle with the regulator, had muddied the crypto waters. 2018 lecture, former US Securities and Exchange official William Hinman declared that Ethereum, the second largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization, was not a security. Declared it was not a security. In May, crypto law founder John Deaton requested the court file an amicus brief to participate in a Dubert challenge involving the testimony of Patrick Duda. An expert SEC witness who claimed to understand the factors that led XRP holders to purchase the asset. Hmm. 
The US Securities and Exchange Commission then informed the court of its opposition to the amicus request for permission request by XRP holders. I'll tell you why I bought XRP, not because Ripple promised me that I'd make money as Ripple made money. I bought XRP because it was the fastest, cheapest, most efficient digital asset out there, and I wanted to own the fastest, most efficient digital asset out there, the, the most liquid asset on the planet. That's why I bought XRP. But if you want to label it a security, SEC, and give me a nice big fat payout, I bought it $3 per XRP. I got 10,000 of them. You do the maths and send it over, yeah? Sweet. <laughs> so, according to recent updates shared by defense lawyer James K. Fillon, Ripple defendants have requested that their response to SEC's opposition to the motion to be filed publicly. However, the SEC is, ex is expected to submit its proposed redactions to the defendant's response, stating what to seal and what to make public. I've got a good idea. Don't seal anything. And release it all, make it all public. What the what have you got to fucking hide? You're a government agency that's supposed to be out to protect investors. Surely if you'd been doing that, you wouldn't have any problem getting your cock out. You just wouldn't. Put it all get it out. Get it out. All on the Get it all on the table, mate. Because <laughs> No one, no, that's not how you gain trust. That's not how a government agency gains trust for me, you know. Like, why would they want to hide any of it, seal any of it, unless they had something to hide that they wasn't supposed to be doing? Ripple opens its first office in Canada as well, and Tether plans to start um, a GBPT. GBPT's coming. GBPT from Tether. From Tether. I will get um, a link in the description for that shit. One sec. GBPT. Tether. Tether to launch GBPT. The British Virgin Islands. Tether Operations Limited, the company operating the blockchain-enabled platform Tether.to, that powers the largest stable coin by market capitalization of over US $68 billion. They have announced they'll be launching Tether tokens, GBPT, pegged to the British pound sterling, and it will be launched in early July. Initial blockchain support will include Ethereum, GBPT will join four other fiat currency peg tokens. We have the US dollar T, the Euro T, the Chinese Rand T, the Mexican Peso T, and now we're going to get the GBPT. <laughs> Fascinating. To think that Tether's getting out there before all the central banks is absolutely incredible. It makes you think like they're fucking smashing it. Whether you like them or not, whether you agree with the protocol or not, it, they are the most popular stable coins. They do seem to be the most stable, stable coins. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting. See, a lot of people want to look at their portfolios and their assets in their local currency, the value of them. They also want to trade out in something of value they know. Um, selling at the top to buy in again at the bottom. So it's, some people in the UK don't want to do that with dollars. They don't want to think, all right, well, it's, it's, it's so many dollars. No, they want to know what it is in pounds. 
and it might be easy to do a shitty little conversion but why when you can sell it a GBP and you've got your pounds there you've got your pounds value in front of your face I've said this many a time the only reason we really actually do need them currencies moving forward is to know what shit is of value bartering is a much better form of trade it just is it's just IOUs and fiat currency make it slightly easier It's going to be fascinating to see how it plays out moving forward because I'm super intrigued to what happens with the CBDCs as a, next to the pegged stable coins. So let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what you think. Will Tether just dome stable coins? Are CBDCs even going to be used that much by people in crypto moving forward? It's fascinating. It's fascinating. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm going to go to work and uh, make up for having to have yesterday off. You know the dance? Invest in yourself. Invest in the internet of value. Live longer and hodl a lot. Never let it go. Get it staked. Get it baked. Look after the pot till the pot looks after you. Yeah. Wishing health and happiness to you and yours. Enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.